Nick Peterson here, and we're going to talk today about something super important. It is going to come before every other step when it comes to mastery, communication, uh, really anything you do in life. Okay, so As a Man Thinketh, phenomenal book in like 1915, right, says, the more tranquil a man becomes, the greater his success and his power for good. Tranquility, calmness, stoicism. I get trouble, like, people give me a hard time all the time because my favorite team wins a Super Bowl. Check it out, Seahawks. My favorite team wins a Super Bowl, cool, right? Big time deal, just had a big old deal, lots of money, cool. My house burnt down one time, cool. Because anything else is an impediment to my learning and my progress. Right now is just right now. And we got to do what we can, but I can't let it affect tomorrow. So the question is, who's driving the car? And what I mean by that is when you're, when you're looking to control your emotions, don't for a second think that means eliminate them. I feel I have emotions. I have feelings. And I've said it many, many times, they, they come with me. They're an important part of being human. They are joining me on my journey. I feel my feelings, but they're not driving the car. I'm not going left because of a feeling I have, right? There's some discernment that goes into it. And that kind of goes right into a response versus a reaction. Now, a response is something that is pragmatic. It's well thought out. It's logical. How do I respond to this situation? A reaction is a complete meltdown, completely lacking discernment. Now, let me explain where we, where I see this the most in, in my business, RD. Uh, Dr. Cashy and Jonathan, both co-owners, developed this phenomenal system. It's data-driven, and there's a ton of different data points because emotions are unreliable. So we want to give people tools to make good decisions. And essentially, it is, oh my gosh, I stepped on the scale. I'm a pound and a half heavier. The whole world's burning down. I'm just going to go exercise a whole bunch, then binge eat and start this yo-yo cycle again, right? That is a reaction. And it does way more damage than good. Now, what they have done is they've developed the ability to help people respond. Logically, well, let's look at the data over time. Did you sleep last night? Oh, you got in a fight with your husband and you didn't sleep? Stress is probably the result. Let's wait two or three days and see what happens to your weight. Sure enough, it goes back to normal and we avoided that whole cycle of yo-yo dieting again, right? That's the difference between a reaction and a response. Whoa, 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 I feel this way. Why do I feel this way? What does the data say about the way I feel? And if there's a discrepancy, if I feel like I'm fat, but I lost three pounds, why do I feel that way? And as you reflect and explore, maybe you start bridging that gap. But the important thing is you don't act on your emotion. You control your emotion. You don't let it control you. And RD, Dr. Cashy has some phenomenal um, methods for self awareifying Oh, I'm about to react. Let me recognize my thought. Let me look at the data and then make a rational decision. Default to calm. Easier said than done. But this is where we want to override. Right, we want to override, oh my gosh, I feel like freaking out right now and don't. I'll I'll kind of explain why. But this is just the ability to do it once. Walk away and say, hey, look, I did it once. I can do it again. You have to learn to make calm your default. Consider this too. Okay, If you're somebody that wants people to know you're upset, if upset is your default, nobody will ever know when you're upset. If sad and crying and freaking out is your default, nobody will ever know when you're actually sad and freaking out and crying. So don't think for a second your emotions are are giving you any kind of identity. It's just becoming normalized there. 
and it's your default. So when you are really upset, nobody's going to fucking believe you, right? So think about that too. Just default to calm. Default to calm. Positive detachment. I call it process-oriented. Um, have no detachment to the results ever. Ever. You can't get upset. But when you have a positive detachment, when you are still working the process of learning, of growing your grass, of helping people, losing weight, whatever, if you do the shit you're supposed to do every day, it will happen. And if you're not having a meltdown over the results every day, You'll have this air about you that all just seems effortless, right? So we say process-oriented. The positive detachment comes with like, hey, I want to grow grass. And I want it to be this tall, right? Dr. Kashi has a great video where he actually uses a tree as an example. But I want it to be this tall. And if you wake up every day, look at your grass and you're pissed off it's not this tall, your life's gonna be horrible. Okay, detach from the result. Just wake up and water this shit every day. And when you do that, over time, you end up getting grass that's way taller. But you're not an emotional wreck the whole time. So this is sales calls. I talk to a lot of people with the intent of helping them and they give me money and I improve their life. Technically, my team improves their life. But I'm completely detached from actually Getting the sale. I want to go through the process. I want to hear about what they have going on. I want to help them. I want to offer them a solution. And if they say no, cool. I can't get upset at people for doing what they do, right? And again, it's just that you get this air of influence by being detached. So focus on the process, right? If you are, if you want to master YouTube, you want a video to go viral, don't throw your hands up and throw a fit every time one is not viral. Just keep making video, right? That's the process. There's a process. And that's why we say process-oriented, not goal-oriented. Um, you want to be in control of your emotions, you have to fall in love with the process and do the day-to-day. -day. Because, eh, something happened today, I still got tomorrow. That's right. Now you're driving the car. Consider the source. Oh, boy. Is it easy to get in an argument on Facebook or in person or whatever? Uh, just consider the source. If somebody says you don't know how to do X, Y, Z, ask yourself, is this person worth listening to? If John Wooden said, hey, you're not a very good basketball coach, I would listen to him. He's the all-time great, right? But when, uh, when homeboy is on the couch drinking a beer saying, oh, that receiver sucks at football, do you think Terrell Owens really cares? Right? Because you consider the source. And that's something that you really have to take to heart because there's so much contact on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter. Just consider the source. There is like a fraction of the 1% of people on this planet that you should actually respond to and zero you should react to. Right? Response versus reaction. Um, and once you can distinguish the difference, 99% of your just shitty feelings go away. Because you're in control. And then last, just pretend like I'm sitting here talking to you or somebody you trust. And you say, yeah, I'm just so, I have so much anxiety about this. What can you do about it? Well, nothing. I'm just going to sit around and be a stress ball. Well, how's that working out for you? Literally two things I tell myself all the time. Well, how's that working out for you? Sitting around being stressed out all the time. Eh, well, it's not, right? Or what's the worst that could happen? Honestly, what is the worst that could happen? Tell yourself the craziest stories ever, and it's still not going to be that bad. It's not worth the stress, the anxiety, the sadness, the anger. Get over it, okay? Default to calm. Generate a response. Stop reacting. I'm going to get more in depth with some of those things, but if you just understand, am I responding or am I reacting? Something triggered me, default. My default is calm now. And you have to tell yourself that until it's a thing. And detach from the results. Maybe you're going to ask a girl out on the date. She might say no. Detach from that result. Okay? It is the process. It is the actually having the courage to, to ask. 
She says, no, cool, plenty more fish in the sea. That's that positive detachment and consider the source. You know, like people can only draw a map to somewhere they've been. So they can't really give you shit about the direction you're going if they haven't been there, right? Consider the source. And then ask yourself, well, I'm an emotional wreck. How's that working out for me? And then answer yourself. That'll go a long way. Hope you guys realize you just got hit with some really powerful and pragmatic stuff. Don't you think? I do. And if you agree, hit the thumbs up button below and like the video. Let me know in the comments what other videos you want to see, what you want me to expand upon, and what questions you have. And remember, all of this stuff is only as powerful as the actions you take in your execution, the practical applications you can derive from it. So let's see how quickly and effectively and efficiently you can master the things to come. You're going to get information here that's going to help you on your journey that you will not find anywhere else. So be sure to subscribe. You don't want to miss one of these videos.